Hey, good morning. Rob Roy here, uh, Western Regional Leader, as well as a member of the teaching team. Uh, just honored to be here with you guys today. Uh, we've got a lot to get through, so I'm going to get right to it. Let's go ahead and go in prayer, guys. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time together and the technology to uh, be able to be together and to share your word. Lord, I pray that uh, the words that come out of my mouth are uh, inspired by you and that I will be speaking what you want me to speak. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time and attention here today. Grab your copy of the word, your favorite beverage. Um, my word uh, is going to be camouflage, and I will get back to that in a few minutes here. So like I said, I've got a lot to get through. So let's go ahead and get, uh, just dive right in. Open your word to uh, Acts 10, 1 through 8. I'm sure this is going to be a familiar um, story to you. Let's go ahead and just get into it real quick. Uh, it says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who were waited on him continually. So when he had, uh, I'm sorry, when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. So here's the sub, guys. We've got a Roman centurion, uh, definitely what would be viewed as a, uh, a Gentile in the eyes of the Jews and the Jewish nation. So this is just the setup. All right, so let's move on. Uh, so in uh, when we get to Peter, uh, one of the things that Peter would have been likely astounded by was the fact that uh, that he heard that God actually spoke to Cornelius, which, uh, as we know, was a Gentile, and uh, Peter would have probably thought this was would have been inconceivable. All right, so let's move on to Acts nine through sixteen, same chapter. Uh, the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up to the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour, then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But, but Peter said, not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven again. So here we have uh, Peter uh, having this vision. He defers to his Jewish religion. He defers to his to his comfort, uh, what he knows. He's He's obviously grown up in the Jewish nation, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, you could say he was just a hardcore Jew and he was just trying to, uh, you know, adhere to all the multiple laws of the Jewish religion and, and culture at that time. Uh, so when he has this vision of, of uh, God basically telling him, go ahead and partake of these things, uh, in, in Peter's eyes, these things were seen as unclean. Uh, so he, he kind of argues with God. He says, but Peter... <laughs> instead of just doing what God tells him to do. So he argues, and, and God uh, comes back and says, no, no, this is, this is good. Go ahead. Uh, so let's continue. This, this, is all, this is all getting a big setup here, guys. So just continue. We'll continue the same chapter, and let's go look at verses 17 through 23. Okay, so it says, Now, while Peter wondered within himself what his vision, what this vision which he had seen meant behold the men who had been sent from cornelius 
had made in inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. All right. So Peter is obviously confused here, but he's obedient. He does what God tells him to do. All right. Uh, continuing with the story. Uh, I'm starting to run out of time here, but essentially uh, Peter goes to Joppa. Um, he enters Cornelius's home, which at that time would have been uh, a big no-no in the Jewish religion. You don't just walk into some Gentile's uh, home, especially a Gentile of such stature as one who represents the Roman Empire, the, the empire that's currently, uh, in, you know, has, has basically taken over your country and is inhabiting it and um, adding extra burdens uh, and making your life uh, more miserable. Uh, so this was definitely something way out of Peter's comfort zone. So um, basically, Peter realizes uh, that from what happened to uh, the, the food coming down from heaven, his vision, that it was okay to partake of these quote-unquote un unclean things now. So we have a parallel here of Peter entering the home of Cornelius, which would have been seen as something unclean, but he does it anyways because he's obedient to God. And he finally realizes that, hey, these people need God just as much as we do. Okay. So it's not just about the Jews. It's about the Gentiles too. Uh, God has not uh, restricted himself just to the Jewish nation. Uh, Peter's eyes are opening up to this, um, especially after everything, uh, when he starts reflecting on you know, the Christ's teachings um, and how they multi multiple times went out to Gentile nations such as Samaria, where, where Jesus was uh, doing his work. So, uh, so basically, Peter stays with this in Cornelius' household for a few days. Some amazing things happen. Uh, but now I need you guys to turn to Galatians 2, 11 through 13. And we're getting to the, to the crux here of what I want to talk about. So... We have here Paul talking to the Galatians, um, and, he says, and he says, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face, because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. So, guys, all that setup was to show, you know, Peter had essentially this revelation where uh, the Gentiles are God's people as well. They need to be talked to and preached to about Jesus. They need to be baptized you know, everything to do with Christianity, uh, the Gentiles are included. But here we have Paul calling out Peter because he observed Peter um, at one point was essentially uh, removing himself and, uh, you know, discriminating against the Gentiles of whom he would sometimes partake with. But when certain people, uh, most likely some influential people around him. Uh, he didn't want to give the image that he was uh, basically hanging out with these Gentiles and eating with them. 
So basically he was playing two sides of the coin. And Paul basically uh, was calling him out on his hypocrisy. So I'll get back to my word real quick, camouflage. So it seemed that Peter at certain times, despite what God had, had shown him, went back and camouflaged himself. He camouflaged back into the culture and the people that he was uh, comfortable with because he didn't want to be seen as someone that was consorting with these people because, you know, he had an image to maintain. So I ask you, and this is just as much for me, when we hang around with certain people, are we changing our behavior to fit in and to camouflage ourselves with those people, despite the fact that our Christianity calls us to be consistent uh, wherever we go? You know, we're not, gonna, we're not supposed to act a certain way with certain people, and then with other people, we act a certain other way. You know, we need to be consistent so um, our Christianity is not camouflaged, but it's right out there where we are boldly proclaiming Christ. We're boldly living out our faith, um, which is what we are called to do day in, day out, no exceptions. Okay. So I ask you, is your Christianity camouflaged? Uh, and if so, I encourage you and challenge you to rip that camouflage right off you know, stop trying to blend into the world and let's live out our faith boldly and strongly and courageously, just like we're called. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Love you all. And uh, I'll see you soon.